What's up, guys? John Madden, YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with Fernando Cortez. We're here in his spot. Cool are, spot, yeah. man. I love it. Thank Temecula, you. California. We're going to talk a little bit about hitting today. Yep. Can you talk about, like, what you would think when you would get into the batter's box? Like, so you, we were talking about you were facing Chapman, all these. You played in the major leagues. Great hitter. Talk about your approach and kind of some of the things you were thinking about as you were facing some of these guys. For me, most of the time, um, you know, just kind of walking into the box, my biggest thing was trying to be relaxed. Um, I already know that hitting a baseball is probably one of the hardest things to do um, in any sport. So for me, it was how can I slow this game down? How can I be more relaxed? I'll be honest with you, there were sometimes I walked up to the plate and I was just trying to figure out what song to sing in my head. You know what I mean? Just because I knew there was just so much riding on this at bat. Um, but for the most part, I was always prepared. Um, so for, you know, different pitchers, I knew what they threw. Um, I knew their velocity. I knew, you know, if they were a slide step type of guy or, if, you know, what their delivery was like. Um, and I studied how they pitched uh, other hitters that were very similar to me. So me being a left-handed guy, I would watch, you know, what did they do to the previous guys or the last time I played them, what did they do? So my biggest thing was trying to be prepared, always prepared walking up to the plate and then just trying to slow it all down and relax. And you were telling me before you used to keep a book of yep. these guys, right? So what would you write down in your book? So book, I would actually write down, uh, so I put their name, and then I would put um, if they're left-handed or right-handed, and then I would put um, what type of pitches they had, what was their arsenal, so did they have a four-seam fastball, did they have a two-seam fastball, um, if they had a breaking ball, was it a curveball, or did they have a slider, um, did they throw a changeup or a splitter, um, or any things that I've ever seen, I would just basically write it down, and then I would put percentages, how many times have I seen it. Um, if it's a guy who threw a knuckleball, but he only threw every once in a blue moon, I would put a percentage that I've only probably seen it like one to 5%, right? So I could heavily, I could look heavily on, on what was being pitched um, and I could basically see, okay, this guy's more of a fastball changeup guy. He does have a curveball or a slider, but in reality, like the percentages, the percentages are showing fastball changeup or fastball curveball. And I was able to kind of like eliminate certain pitches even though it was part of his repertoire. Um, and then I would also um, put miles per hour, so as far as how fast are they throwing, it'd give me a good gauge if I knew he was, you know, 90 to 95, or he was 88 to 92, or, you know, 97 to 100. I knew that's what his fastball is, and I could just prepare myself as far as my timing. Nice. So that's obviously taking preparation to the extreme level. Now, what about, like, as you get into the game? Now you're, we're going from in the hole to on deck to now you're getting to the batter's box. What was your routine? So very similar um, preparation. I also was visualizing. So I was visualizing in the dugout. I would visualize um, when I was in the hole. I would visualize when I was on deck. And then when I got into the box, I was still visualizing everything that I just did in the previous four steps, right? I'm slowing it all down. I'm envisioning whatever he's throwing and what I'm going to do to that pitch. I mean, there's literally times where I've envisioned myself hitting a double to left center field. I get a pitch that I saw when I was visualizing, hitting a double, standing on second base, taking my shin guard off, going, wow, that was weird. That was really <laughs> weird. But I think, you know, if you're prepared and you're preparing all the way through, by the time you get into the box and you actually have that at bat, your natural talent, mechanics, and ability just takes over. And that was my goal was always to just let my athleticism take over, let, you know, the fact that I've worked hard in preparing just naturally take over. So, so when you get into the box, would you, you'd say you had a quiet mind or a song like you yep. said you were singing? So basically just see the ball and hit the ball when you get to that point? When I'm going good, yeah. When I'm, when I'm going good, that was, that was the goal. It was, it, was, it was pretty much happening. I was, I was very relaxed. I came to the point where I was just seeing the ball and hitting it. It was more reaction than anything. When I was going bad, there was a lot of stuff going on in my head. So I found the most success was when I was the most quiet. Um, not that I just shut my brain off and I was on autopilot, you know, reaction, but I still want to know, like, you know, what's happening, the patterns of the pitcher, and still be able to process it and then just shut it off for, for a second and just get into hitting mode. Um, but the most success was mostly when I was, when I was really just not inside my head. I was letting my physical abilities take over. Um, and when I wasn't doing well, it was, it was backflips in there. <laughs> so how do you get out of that? Like if there's a young player who's struggling right now, they're in a slump, like what was your routine of like trying to get out of that? For me, it was, it was knowing that I was actually a, a good hitter. Um, having the ability to go back and reference, you know, the confidence that I've had 
Um, or even take another at-bats. Like, you may have struck me out the last two times, but I can go back to the previous at-bats and know that I got two hits off of you. So I'm putting things into perspective and, and really looking at it from a different perspective and that perception of, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up because I've had a couple at-bats, uh, at-bats that are bad, right? They say, you know, if you're a 300 hitter, you know, there's guys in the Hall of Fame, it means you're failing 70% of the time. So once I actually embraced the fact that I'm going to fail 70% of the time and that's considered great, then that gave me the ability to know that it's okay to get out, um, you know, and move on to the next one. It's the old saying, like, turn the page, right? If I read the first four or five chapters, I don't want to go back to that other chapter, whether it was good, bad, or ugly. It doesn't matter. I still need to keep going forward in order to finish the book, right? So my biggest thing was I got really good. It took a while, don't get me wrong. It, I got really, really good at just going forward, moving forward, not getting too high on my successes, not getting real you know, low on my failures, but trying to stay even keel as much as I possibly could because if I could stay even keel mentally, then my physical ability would be able to just play out the way it's supposed to. And you talked about confidence a little bit right there. Talk about being a young big leaguer because you made it there at a young age but having that swag, swag. because you were known for swag. having that swag in yeah. the big leagues. Talk about that and how it was perceived and how you used that to your uh, benefit. Well, for me, um, I mean, you know, I played multiple sports. So it was football, baseball, basketball, ran, you know, I ran track. It was, it was always the way you walked onto the field or onto the court, you know, or at the meet. It was the way, you know, you presented yourself with your body language, right? A lot of people who will, you know, you can tell who the best player is going to be, literally by the way they walk on the field. You go, look at the way he's walking. How's he walking? His posture's up. He's, he's got confidence in his walk. If he's got confidence in his walk, he's got to have confidence in everything else, right? And you can basically see the people who are shrugged over and who lack that confidence. Now, for me, the way I played my confidence was, I, even when I wasn't feeling well, if my swing was off or... You know, I didn't feel the best of my ability that day. I didn't want the other team to know, and I definitely didn't want the pitcher to know. So that old saying, you fake it till you make it, I, a lot of times I was faking it. So physically on the outside, it looked like I, I, was, I was the man, and I was, you know, I was very confident. But maybe inside, I was insecure about something at that moment. So my whole thing was I could fake myself into actually being confident a lot of times. I could, right. I could just train myself to always feel positive and feel good no matter I might be three for 30 but if I walk up to the plate like I'm three for 30 it's going to translate and that three for 30 is going to turn into three for 50 right my whole thing was how fast can I get rid of this lump I don't want those three for 30s if I if I'm three for you know 15 let me let me flip this around real quick and then you know I can I can not prolong um, having these bad streaks and on the flip side if I'm very confident I can extend my hitting streaks I can turn my five games into 10 games, my 10s into 15s into 20 games because mentally I'm consistently being confident. I'm having that swagger. I'm going up to the plate and I know that that guy ain't going to get me out even though he throws 100 miles per hour. <laughs> right. But I'm not going to let him know that his 100 scares me. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. it's, it's, it's a mental challenge that I think a lot of young hitters probably battle. Um, but I think once they can actually um, master that mindset of knowing that you're good enough. I mean, you're obviously in the batter's box for a reason. You made it, you're there. Whether you're on the high school team, varsity, college, professional, you're there for a reason. So pretty much act like it. That's a great point. You, we talked earlier about uh, competitiveness and the fight, fight or flight. flight. Yep. Talk about, are, were you a competitive player at all? And if so, how did that fuel your success? And did you do anything to work on it? Or was that just natural to you? Um, I think it was natural. I think it was natural the way I, you know, the way I was brought up. Um, you know, I lived at the rec center with all the kids, so I was always playing football, baseball, basketball. Like I said, I ran track. So, you know, having that mindset of, of being successful and beating the other guy um, was something that always helped me. Um, as I got older, I realized that the biggest competitor I had was myself, and that was fun. It was fun to compete against myself because I couldn't get away from myself. So I always had somebody to compete with, you know? Um, it's either, like I said before, you're either going to fight it or you're going to flight. You're going to run away. And I just, I was never the person to really run away from stuff, um, even though if I was scared. If I was scared about a certain situation or a certain um, pitcher. I remember my first big league at bat, right? I, Lou Pinella tells me, he goes, Cortez, you're hitting. 
I didn't even know, I was pinch hitting, right? And it's in Chicago in front of, it was July 5th. So the whole series, there's 55,000 people there because of the 4th of July, right? And this is 2005 when the White Sox won the World Series. So they got a you know, great team. And I remember this was the first time I ever noticed that I had one ear flap um, in the big leagues. In the, in the minor leagues, you have two ear flaps on your helmets, right? So I get up on deck and I didn't realize I had one ear flap until I noticed I could hear everyone. And I noticed how loud the crowd was. And I remember just chewing on like 17 pieces of gum because I was so nervous, right? But if you watch film on me walking up to the plate, it looks nothing like how I actually felt. It's completely different. I walked up to the plate with this utter confidence, but in the inside I was dying. You know, right. I was excited, I was nervous, I was dying. But it was one of those things where I was like, okay, I can either run from the situation or I can fight it. And this is everything I dreamed of. So I'm supposed to be here right now, let's do this. So that's awesome, that's awesome. That, a lot of good information right there, guys. Uh, Fernando's got a great Instagram page, uh, Fernando. Cortez.baseball on Instagram and all the other platforms, as well as YouTube, too. Yeah. So I'll leave all his information down below at the links. Check him out. Uh, and, of course, hop down in the comments below, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And uh, we'll talk to you guys in the next video. Cool, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me out, yeah, man. Absolutely. It's a beautiful place. Thank you. Appreciate it.